Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Airburst Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today I'm really excited because I got a new airbrush. I'm always excited when I get a new airbrush. So I'm going to be doing a review and an unboxing on an Iwata Neo CN that I picked up at my local Hobby Lobby for 60 bucks. Now you can get this on Amazon for 60 bucks. So Hobby Lobby's price is right on point. So if you like this type of content, stick around, check it out. Consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. Thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and help build this channel. And with that, let's get started. All right, so as I said, it's an Iwata product. It is just another Iwata to my arsenal of, starting to be my arsenal of Iwata airbrushes. Um, I didn't have this one. Um, if you watched any of my other videos, you know that I have uh, several other Iwata airbrushes, just love them, just can't get enough uh, airbrushes in general. But my go-to brand is Iwata. It's just what I started with 20 years ago and just, you know, took a liking to them ever since. I know there's a lot of good other airbrushes out there that people use. I think it all really depends on what you get started with and what you get used to. But this is the lower end of the Iwata series. So I am very interested in to see how it would spray. It has a 0.35 needle nozzle combination, um, just like the Iwata Eclipse, which sells for about $160. And that is the go-to Iwata airbrush for, you know, many professionals, uh, uh, anywhere from, you know, beginner on all the way up through, you know, professional illustrators and airbrushers. At 160 bucks, that is a really great price point also on the Eclipse. But I really am curious to what a $60 Iwata airbrush sprays like. So let's open it up and take a look. So before we do that, right on the back, Iwata always, even on our website, gives you what the brush is good for. And in this case, it's more medium uh, type of lines, and it does trickle into the fine and the wide range. So it, again, with the 0.35, just like the Iwata Eclipse, I'll show you, you can get really fine lines and dots um, to you know, a nice broad spray. It's like it comes with a five-year warranty. So, here's the box. You got in here, just like every Iwata product or any probably a lot of the others, gives you a little bit of uh, instruction on how to use the airbrush. Quick start guide. I don't think you're really going to learn anything new in there if you ever picked up an airbrush before. If not, give it a read. Oh, this is really cool. Didn't expect to see this. But um, what I like with a lot of the airbrushes, and I think a lot of starting to follow suit, is I see right off the bat that the cup is detachable. Now, that is a feature that is not on the uh, Eclipse, but I really do like this feature. So we'll set that aside for a second. But I also see something really cool in here that I wasn't expecting, and that is a smaller cup. That's a really cool feature for a $60 gun to give you that little added bonus. I think that's really, really cool. Now there is no lid to that like you have on this cup, but a lot of times, I hate to say I don't spray with a lid a lot of times, but it has burned me in the past by not spraying with the lid, let's put it that way. Now, the standard wrench that they have here. Now, I wasn't sure because I didn't really look into this airbrush before I bought it. Um, you know, I have seen it before, but uh, I look at so many, I forgot what the needle nozzle combination is. And again, on the Iwata Eclipse, it has a compression brass fitted nozzle, um, which I really do like that design because you don't have to deal with a very small nozzle like you're gonna see in here, but this is their standard wrench. Um, I have probably about five of these now. So you got your needle cap here. Okay. And we have our nozzle cap.
And every time I am going to deal with one of these nozzles, I always need to put my glasses on because they are very tiny. Now, what I'd like to say about these nozzles are you don't want to over tighten them. Okay, it is just to the point when you tighten it back on that you just tighten it on and just snug it. You know, I get so many viewers out there telling me how they strip these threads and they don't like these nozzles. And, and I get it that they're really, really small, but I'm going to throw a picture up there of this because I don't think that the camera is going to be able to focus in on it. But there is a little tiny, tiny little rubber o ring on that nozzle, and then you know, some really small threads. So you just got to be very careful. And always, when you're taking this apart on this gun or any gun with a nozzle like this, that you're doing it over a table because if this thing falls, it's really hard to find. Okay, so it doesn't have a cutaway on the back which uh, again, not a feature. I mean, it's a nice feature. I do use it to un, you know, unclog sometimes. Um, so it is a nice feature. I know a lot of people won't even spray with the back on. I know for years, I didn't even put the back on. I just kept it off before they started putting the cutaways on. So I can pull my needle back and forth to try to unclog some jams. Um, but you know, not a feature that I use a lot if uh, I found that I you know, needed to be unclogging it a lot of times. Uh, Obviously, you got something going on with the gun, so uh, on or off doesn't really matter, but it doesn't have the cutaway like the uh, Eclipse does. Looks like the rest of the mechanisms look pretty much the same. You got your needle. Now, that needle would be also the same needle that is in the Eclipse, like I said, a 0.35. The trigger mechanism looks like the same as that's on my Eclipse. Now on the newer Eclipses, it might have a slightly different uh, design, just with maybe a bevel in the way the knurls are. I know this is, uh, I'll show you an example here of the HP C Plus, has a more slanted forward bevel design, you know, for your finger. So it looks like they kept this one standard more to the later styles. So I'm not going to go taking it all the way apart. It's like any other standard airbrush for the most part or any Iwata that, you know, you can un take this out and you got your spring in here. So we're going to test out how the trigger feels, you know, under pressure. Uh, right now it feels pretty standard, but we'll see what it feels like under pressure. Um, there is no trigger stop on this. I never learned what a trigger stop. Um, I don't really understand a lot of times why they put trigger stops even on the higher end guns. Uh, if somebody's buying a higher end gun like that, they probably didn't learn what a trigger stop, so they probably don't use it. And I actually don't even recommend it. I'd rather see uh, somebody learning airbrush learn their uh, trigger control with their finger. Another really cool thing that I did not expect to see was, and I found that by accident, was that, where do you see this? When you pull the trigger out, this is not like on the Eclipse. This doesn't have a little swivel point on it. It just has a little ball, okay? And this makes it so much easier to put the trigger in. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me pull out my Eclipse here. Yeah. If I was to pull the trigger out on the Eclipse, I'll take the needle out, of course. Can I pull this out? This has that little swivel pin on it. And that becomes very difficult to try to put back into the gun. This, this makes it really easy. So all you got to do is pull back on your spring, right? Take your ball, stick it right in the hole, and forward, and it just clips right in. That is nice. So then your needle just slips right through. It's as easy as that. As like I was saying on the Eclipse, you pull back on your spring. This is a lot harder to manipulate to try to get down into that air valve. Every now and then I'll luck out like that and get it right in, but that's not the case most of the time. Trust me, that's a much more difficult uh, trigger to put back in than what's on that Neo. So let's put it back together and uh, let's spray some paint. So 
So before we do the test, I just want to let you know what type of paint and reducer I'm using. I'm using Createx Wicked Colors for this test. It's got some uh, detail black in here. And I'm going to be using the Createx 4011 reducer. These are the paints that I use. And I know there's other great paints out there. All right, so I already have some loaded up here in my gun, and I have it sitting for about, you know, about 10 minutes. But the other thing I want to tell you is I got something really cool down at Hobby Lobby the other day. You know, um, use all kinds, you know, my own homemade uh, mixing sticks. But I'll tell you what, these wood, it's called Wood Pile Fun. Okay, they were $3. I have enough mixing sticks in here that's going to probably last me pff, the rest of my airbrushing career, which is really cool. So it's like a really small popsicle stick. It's cool. It gets right in your cup. gets down nice and deep in there. It's not so big. They're only about, what, about 3 16 wide. So I really do like them. Go pick yourself some up. We'll pop a link down below where you can get them on Amazon if you don't want to go to Hobby Lobby. But I recommend you get a pack of them. They're really good. All right, now that we got our board pulled a little closer, let's test this gun out. Before we get started, I will tell you to recommend a pressure, at least on the box, is between 8 and 20 PSI. I normally spray around 30 PSI, so I'm going to lower it down to about 25 PSI for this test. I like to remove my needle cap. I don't generally spray with it on just because I like to be able to clear my clogs with my fingers or a little paintbrush with some reducer on it. All right, let's just start off by painting a little fade. Trigger feels good, feels responsive. Let's do some lines. So that's about, you know, what, half inch, three quarter line. Let's go in a little tighter. Wow. All I can say is wow. That bottom one is hairline. Beautiful. I cannot believe it. I mean, that just sprayed so nice. I didn't get any skips or anything as I was going across the line, even with that really fine detail. And it was really responsive as far as paint on, paint off. Let's try some dots. I'm not quite sure how much finer detail that you're ever going to need or want. But, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I mean, I'm going to be using the heck out of this brush along with my eclipses. And again, it's at 25 PSI. Nice dagger strokes. So, I mean, there's your basic of your airbrush. You got your lines, big to small. You got them dagger strokes. You got your dots. Not much more that you need, or uh, you know, that you really need to test with an airbrush. So you can just really see the fine detail that you can get from the, you know, the biggest detail to the fine detail.
Well, there you have it. Totally blown away by a $60 gun. Iwata has done it again, in my opinion. Anybody who just wants to get into airbrushing and you don't want to spend a lot of money to see if you like it, I highly recommend this is the brush to go with. Go down to your local Hobby Lobby. I'll put a link down below so you can get it on Amazon. It's the same exact price. So if you don't have a Hobby Lobby by you and you just want to order it online for the convenience, uh, a lot of times I don't like buying things in the, in the big box stores because the price point could be higher than what you can get it online, but it's exactly the same price. So I'm going to pop one down below for you just for your convenience. But I'll tell you what, I am super, super excited that, uh, and I can't believe I didn't put one uh, to my collection already. Just the features on it with uh, the interchangeable cup, so you could have a big cup, small cup. Um, I just love that feature. I have it on a couple other airbrushes, and I think, you know, like I said, a lot of the airbrushes are starting to come out with it. It's just a really cool feature that makes the gun a lot easier to clean. So with that, I hope you like this content. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing so you get more content like this. Thumbs up would be great. A couple comments, like I said earlier, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, good or bad. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links down below for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.